Okay, so next was, like I said, we're gonna start working on the, the configurator. And I, I, don't know if, I don't know if I mentioned this the other day or not, um, but I, I, I was talking to Hannah about it and I mentioned it to her. Um, so it, it kind of comes back, and I think I mentioned something about data structures yesterday. I really wanted to cover the basics of what a data structure is. There's, a there's some components that make up a data structure. One is it stores data, right? That, that's kind of the obvious part. But then there's a way to access that data and a way to chat, uh, change or set the data. So basically you have a setter and a, a setter and a getter. And that's what we have here in our configurator. We have a set configuration and we have a get configuration and we have a data.js, which is our, where we store our data. So technically this configuration system is a data structure. It's kind of a flat one like what we, we were talking about yesterday, but there's examples of other data structures. Uh, a good example of the most simple one is probably just an array. So you have an array and how do you get to the data? You index the array. And how do you change it or, or uh, delete it or set it? You index the array. It's all done with indexing, right? There are other data structures. There are, like I mentioned before, there's the stack, there's the queue, and they, they have different algorithms to get and set the data. I mean, the data is still the data, um, but for a stack, obviously, if you have a stack of papers, uh, how do you add to the stack? You put new stuff on the top. And how do you take it off? You take it off from the top. You don't take stuff off the bottom or the middle or anywhere else. It's the same, okay, so for a queue, you put stuff at the top of the queue and you pull stuff off the bottom, right? Because you in-queue it and you dequeue it. And keep adding and you can keep removing and you can add a bunch more and then to take a bunch more off and, you know, but it's always in that order. You take from the bottom and get the idea of how that works. But there's other data structures. I mean, obviously, the, how you get data, you need to tell it to always go to the top. And if it's a stack, it's always got to be the top, you know, adding and removing. The queue is going to be a little bit different, right? So there's these algorithms to get and set data on those data for different things. And so that's what this is, this configuration data structure, essentially. And right now it's, a, like we talked about yesterday, it's a flat data structure. Um, but there, like I mentioned, there's other kind of data structures. So uh, like if you were to take a university class on data structures, you're going to learn about all these other kinds. And I'll just mention them. We won't have to go into all the details. Uh, normally you would like implement each one to see, okay, this is how you implement that one, and this is how you implement this one, and you know, you'd learn how to implement each one, each type. And also you can mix and match, so you can take a certain array and mix it with this, and you know, you can do all kinds of interesting stuff. And like we're doing here with this configuration, you could build your own custom one from scratch. So once you know how, how to build data structures, then you can follow those patterns and modify them to whatever it is that you need. And some other data structures are a linked list. So the idea of a linked list is uh, you have, uh, it's like an array, except usually a linked list is just uh, like a pointer from element one points to element two, and element two points to element three. So usually you have like a function that says next, and the next element, another pointer that says next to it, go next, 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 and it goes all the way down the line. Um, but you can, ha and there'll be other stuff in there like link, get to the, the head, the end, so you can get the ends, you know, kind of like that. But then you'll have, there's another one is a doubly linked list, and that's where each element has a pointer that goes to previous and to next. Anywhere in the list, you can always navigate to previous, 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 and you'll still have the head and the tail and the length and all of that business. And then there's data, there's other data structures. Another data structure example would be a hash table which is kind of like an array, except it's very fast. It's extremely fast. So you've got a hash table, you've got linked list, doubly linked list, and then you've got trees. So they're called binary search trees. Yes, there's all kinds of algorithms for adding to them because usually you have rules that need to be maintained. And so you want to make sure your, your tree stays balanced. And how, like, let me give you an example where a binary search tree becomes very useful. So if you have an array, uh, and you're adding data to your array and you need to index the array and you need to search the array to find out if you're adding a duplicate, uh, you know, all those things, right? Uh, or you need to add it and it needs to maintain sort order, like alphabetic sort order or numerical sort order. Then you have to, you know, search through the array and find out the one that matches the one that you're adding, figure out what you need to add it at, you know, and do all of that work. Now, if you had to do all of that work and your array contains a hundred elements, that's going to go pretty fast, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a thousand elements, it's going to take quite a bit longer, but still should be within the millisecond. If you have a hundred thousand elements, yeah, it could take a little bit longer to search through all of that. Now we're talking like in the in the seconds, 
right? Now you're going to start to notice it. Still maybe you might, might be okay, depending on the application. But let's say you have a million elements. Now you're going to have to search through half a million elements just to find out, add something. It's not really going to scale. Now it's going to take five or ten minutes to add something, you know, and that's just a million elements. What if it's 10 million or 100 million? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't do that. Now, now you're talking hours. That's not going to work. So that's where binary search trees come in because you can, you can do a depth search first or you can do a breadth search first. And you can find very fast, very quickly. There's different algorithms that will allow you to find it in like five steps you can find exactly where you need to add something so now you can add it in in milliseconds even if you have a hundred million elements so you see where you can scale the algorithm the, the algorithms are quite a bit more sophisticated uh, but they allow you to do a lot of stuff and then you have to rebalance the trees so you have to maintain it and you know manage it but then there's other kind of binary search trees there's uh, bin red black binary search trees so that each node can have a color and you, need, you know, it's either red or it's black, and you can add, you have to balance the color. You can't have too many blacks, but you can't have too many reds. It can't be too left-handed or too, it has to this balanced tree. And there's algorithms that will rebalance it and re-change the colors and make, make sure all the rules are followed, you know what I mean. Um, so there's a lot to, you know, those algorithms. And then there's another kind of tree called a quad tree. And a quad tree is extremely important. Uh, it's one of the most important data structures, and that's because it was the foundation of Google Maps. Google Maps would not exist without the quad tree, period. It's, that's the algorithm. And it's featured in a movie called The Billion Dollar, and it's because it's source code that's worth a billion dollars. Obviously, Google Maps is worth a billion. Mm -hmm. It's about a company in, in Switzerland, I think, that uh, some, some guys, some hackers, uh, figured out how to build this algorithm that would allow them to render... Uh, geographic information in a real-time screen uh, and it would load you know terabytes of data but not all of it at once it would load it using quadrum and then they they were sort of immature and their lead engineer gave the algorithm away to an uh, engineer who would eventually go to work for Google hmm. so these data structures they're very very powerful they're very useful and they form the foundation of a lot of what we do in our modern world like I said, the print queue, for example, the mm -hmm. tree for Google Maps, all of these things, and that that you can it's a Netflix movie, so you can watch it on the billion dollar code. Never heard of it, but it sounds interesting. Yeah, it's it's really really, good. but it's also heartbreaking, and it also is a good movie to learn some lessons about you know keeping control of your intellectual property um, because that's what happens, and there's lawsuits and stuff. So, anyways. All right, so, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out, that that's, that's what we're doing. This is a data structure. And there's documentaries on YouTube, you know, tutorials and stuff out, what, docu what data structures are, and tutorials about how to implement them, the different kinds. So you could always, you know, look up those and research that a little bit. So hopefully I've given you sort of a, a good primer on data structures. I think we can go ahead and get into this now. Implement a bunch of support functions. Maybe we should implement those first and then come back and re-implement our getter and setter. We have a getter and setter, they're just not really implemented right now. So let's do that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Let's go down here to after the get, make some new lines, and we're gonna have a new function. Function process configuration name rules fully qualified name. Okay. And you'll start to see how these, these various pieces come together. Um, some of them are useful in and of themselves. Other ones, I mean, a lot of, I mean, all of them we need uh, in one form or another. And a header for this, like this, at function process configuration name rules. Description is processes a fully qualified name and extracts the configuration name without the namespace. Okay, so uh, let me explain a little bit about what, uh, let me get rid of this. I'll explain a little bit more about fully qualified name, what my use that is, and namespace. So a namespace is kind of like an address, and this is for navigating a tree. And the tree is, the namespace is the elements that you need to navigate down the tree to find the final location you're looking for. 
Um, you could think of it sort of like a folder structure. And the namespace would be the, the, the full path, right, to your folder and the file. The full path to array parsing, source, business, rules, rules, array parsing, right? And there's lots of folders, so I go C drive, A stacks, source, uh, business rules, rules, and then I get to array parsing, right? But there's all kinds of other folders that I could take, right? Right. Does that, does that kind of give you an idea? What we're, yeah. It's a, there's all kinds of folders. There's all kinds of paths we could take through our data structure. But the namespace gives a unique path to get uh, this param is a string. And here is also a string. And the fully qualified name would be essentially the, the full path of that namespace. Okay, so the fully qualified name with the namespace included. And it's going to return the name of the configuration setting without the namespace. And author. And date. 2.20203. And I got to add a note here. Use the loggers here because of a circular dependency. The old fashioned console logs. So let's see if we can get the name. The name and these begin and I guess I'll just copy all of that, even if it's commented out. I'm going to uncomment them because this is a new function and I'm, we're, I know we're going to need to debug it. And I'll go ahead and then grab this stuff up here. Drop that in here. Change to return value. Return value. And return value. And this qualified name, oops, we gotta change the name too. And fully qualified name, we'll put that here and there. Fortunately, this function is a pretty small one, so don't have to do too much. Uh, so we'll say let return value, let fully qualified array equal fully qualified name dot split and we're going to split it on the, the period and then we'll say return value equals fully qualified name array and we'll index fully qualified name array dot length minus one function Process configuration name space rules fully qualified name again already in the header small header I think okay at function is process configuration name configuration namespace rules description is processes a fully qualified name and extracts the namespace so basically the other one gets the name and this one gets the namespace uh, so the string this one is also a string. So the fully qualified name is the fully qualified name with the namespace included. And the return is the namespace of the configuration setting without the configuration name. Author date two zero two zero three and my note, which is the same note from up here. 
Okay, and I guess I'll just copy paste the contents of the function. To get the name. Uh, fully qualified name, that can true, that's the same. Everything after these two lines, after, after, everything after the return value, I'm going to wipe that out because that's implementation. Return value is the same. Return value, okay, yes. We say return value equals fully qualified name dot substring zero to fully qualified name dot last index of period. Like that. Maybe you'll do the substring again. Yeah, I, I guess. I suppose that'll work. If return value dot includes debug functions or return value dot includes debug files. Okay. And now I've got a big long note here that I'll copy paste for you. We need to strip off the debug functions and debug files prefixes along with the pipe that delimits them. At some point, we might need these separate designations like for the colorizer logic but for now until there is a business need I will keep them unified everything to the right all falls under the designation of debug settings I'm going to put that in quotes. Okay. So that as the base for the namespace tree should work perfectly. Alright, and then we've got some actual logic. And I'll copy paste that for you. Uh, the logic says let parsed debug settings namespace equal return value dot split on the period, return value equals parsed debug setting namespace one. The next one is a function and a process configuration value rules, and that's name and value. Okay, and the usual header that function process configuration value rules description uh, processes a name and value to execute required and convert string values to actual data objects needed by the configuration system. I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or not. Oh yeah, 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 this is, this is accurate. This is a little bit of um, uh, a hackish data process, but it's part of the configuration and it makes sense. It's separate from the data loading system, which does a lot of this, does similar, but this one is very specific to configuration. So that's, that, that is an accurate description. Uh, string and this one is a string and this one is a string or a boolean or an integer or a float object. In practice it's most likely just going to be a string. These, these specific value rules are very specific for configuration. Later on we might have more, I mean you could add more. The name of the configuration variable without the namespace. And the value is the value of the configuration variable. Return 
is a value that is appropriately processed. We'll add the author. Date. V3. And we have to add the obligate cannot use loggers here because of the circular dependency. All the functions in this file are going to be like that. And then we can just copy paste the contents again. Name. This also changes name. Name. And I'll just copy that, I suppose, for value. Value is value. Let return value, and then everything after that let return value, I'm going to wipe out. The return value itself, all that code is the same, so that's fine. Thinking behind this, uh, this process configuration value rules was to make it sort of a little bit more future proof and modular in how we process um, configuration values. So basically, there, there should be a set of rules that you could execute against a set of values, right? So you have a, a value that comes in, and it, and it gets the appropriate processing that it needs, and it returns like it's supposed to. And this is sort of meant to be the beginning of a modular system to do that. In practice, there's not a lot of actual types to work on. There's really only just three and kind of evaluated the same. So we'll see that here in a second. Uh, yeah, so the return down here, this return value, does need to be stringified. That's the only one that does. So all we do is say switch name. And oops, I need to bump this over so it's in line properly. Okay, switch. And we have case, date, time, stamp. Case date stamp colon case time stamp break. Now I'll write the next case, which is actually just default because that's the last one. So default and break. And now we've implemented the basics, and I'll come back and fill this in. Uh, there's a couple notes here. This one is going to say, note, all of these three configurations are processed exactly the same way. As long as what is stored in the configuration file is correct, then they should be processed correctly here. Turn value equals timers get now moment value. And I don't know if you remember when we implemented the timers get now moment. Um, it was it's been a while, uh, but we did I, we did implement that one a little while ago. And that's the end of that case. And this one said under under default, I'm going to say we don't know what the value is. We have to just return the value as it was passed in no processing. Processing. We don't want to corrupt the other data that may be passed into this function. Because we could, I mean, probably everything is going to be falling through here. So return data equals value, and we only want to do the special processing when we actually hit one of these date, time, stamp, date, stamp, time, stamp type of values. Maybe this is the right time to cut it off. There's two functions left in the module exports. And we're done with this thing. Um, and then we have a couple more functions to implement, and then we're wrapping up all of training, getting really close. Nice. All right, man. All right, man. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You have a good one. All right, take Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.